The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. You're listening to Creeping Wave Radio, a documentation of our decidedly creepy escapades here on Mind. once the mics go off. How big is the space exactly? I don't know, but I feel like we've been walking for hours. It's not so much farther now. Come on, step lively, everyone. Looks like those younger houses are lagging behind. You think they're up to something? Better go take a look, see. And we'll just stick another one there. And right here should be good. Yep. What's that you youngsters are tacking up on that there wall? Oh, nothing. Nothing, huh? Let me see this here nothing. Oh, they're just a little insurance policy. You know, like breadcrumbs to help us find our way back. Breadcrumbs usually don't have a countdown clock attached. You wouldn't be dabbling in demolition now, would you? The real question is, would you? We're just younger versions of yourselves, remember? No, I don't remember. In fact, I'm starting to think you're not really us at all. Well, no, wait. I do remember something about us coming back in time to help our older selves, and the bit about Napoleon becoming some highfalutin dictator, but after that, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, well, that's because this is the first time you've lived out this particular timeline. What? That can't be right. Explain yourself. Well... In all previous attempts with this trajectory, you old-timers didn't make it this far. And we need you for the mission that's to follow. We've been going back and forth, taking notes and trying to get this right. And creating alternate timeline branches in the process. No, this is all wrong. We'd never be so careless, not even in our youth. Who are you kids? Who are you shilling for? You two just stay quiet. No one needs to know about this. There's more at stake here than you could possibly understand. Then let us help you. Yeah, whatever it is, it's going to affect all of us. So why are you being so secretive about it? Hush. Somebody's coming. Uh Uh-oh. Octavius, spread your tentacles out. Blanket the hallway and throw up some camouflage for our friends. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Let's see. Suction on to here. And another leg there. Yep. And another. And another. And just stretch these out right here. That should hold right. Uh, Here we go. How are you doing that? I have suckers on each tentacle. Kind of like a plunger. No, I mean the camouflage color change bit. Oh, that's just his crew metaphors, dear. What? <laughs> oh, there are these muscle-controlled pigment cells. It's really not that difficult, though, seeing as everything's white. Can the science lesson, Octavius? We've got company. I knew I smelled something rotten. Calmagula, Matidus, what are you two doing out of your tank? And, uh, where's Octavius? Oh, you know how Octavius is. Incorrigible little scamp. He's in the loo. Wow. Thanks, guys. And who told you that you were free to just wander around the premises? Hmm? We're on an errand. Yes, a very important one. Yes. Mm, The prisoner. Yes, the prisoner. They needed to, uh, well, they thought it might be rather lovely if they, um... They needed butter, buttered biscuits? Yes, needed butter for the biscuits. Lovely, rich, creamy butter. Real butter. 
None of that margarine stuff. No, no, it is it's just ghastly. Really, it is. Poisonous to turkeys, you know. How dreadful. Focus, guys. Come on. Yes, so then, we, the two of us, that is, are on a butter run. Going to get that butter from the break room. Well, fine then. But be quick about it and mop up after yourselves this time. The boss is still getting used to his new legs, and we can't afford for anything to happen to him. You can come down now, Octavius. <sighs> Thank goodness. I'm starting to cramp up. The boss? Who's that? We're really not sure, to be honest. They don't keep us much in the loop. Used to be this screaming German brain in a jar. Then it was this zombie-looking bloke whose jaw kept flopping off. You heard what he said about new legs. Sounds like literally Hitler found himself a new body after all. Then we're too late. Don't give up. If they took Nap's brain out, there's no reason we can't find it and stuff it back in. We'll have to hurry, though. I've never transplanted a brain before, but I've done it with plenty of plants in my garden. Once they take root, it's a real chore getting them back out again. The holding chamber is this way, down that hall, and through the... Oh. Oh, what? We always access it through the cistern. It's a vault that holds the water supply for the ship, or rather base. This place, here. No, not water. Anything but that. I'm too delightfully fuzzy in Coruscant to die. You may be delightfully fuzzy. And also cuddlesome. Thibault's my kitty friend. It's Tybalt. But I, Gabe the Lizard Man, do forswear that you shall not die this day. Well, I guess that depends on how long you can hold your breath. I made it in three minutes once, in aqua aerobics back at the home. Then she passed out. They had to resuscitate her. It was invigorating. You're going to have to do better than three minutes, I'm afraid. You demons go ahead. Should be a cakewalk for you three. No, we're not leaving anyone behind. It's too dangerous for us to get separated in here. Katya, tell me this place is starting to ring a few bells for you. There's got to be another way. The cistern is a good idea. You cannot be serious. Yes, Werewolf, I am. Jeremy and I can transpose some of our ether in you. Just a pinch for each of you now. To see that your bodies are resilient enough to make it into the holding chamber at least. You'll have to find another way back. Duh. But what about you? You'll be weakened, and this place is crawling with traps. We have a better chance of getting out of this place than any of you do, weakened or otherwise. No, I'm not letting you do this. Neither am I. I know, which is why I'm not giving you a choice. It's been a pleasure serving with you, all of you. Ah. Uh. So you see, Napoleon, you have no recourse but to come back into the fold and serve me, as you were born to do. You say you're always a step ahead of me. I am. Puppeting my every move. You have never had a single thought enter your head that I haven't planted the seed of first. Except while your goons had my arm twisted behind my back and relieved me of my phone, they forgot one thing. <laughs> oh, you mean that enchanted pistol old Scratch entrusted with you? I do. I told them to leave it on you. I doubt you have paid me much mind if you didn't believe deep down in your soul that you actually had the upper hand. Well, I mean, I kind of do, though. If I use this silver round and shoot you, your soul becomes property of Old Scratch, and I... Get whatever your greedy little heart desires in return. I know how it works. I also know that after everything I've told you today, after my words put asunder all you believed yourself to be, well, hmm, 
We both know there's no way that you'll pull that trigger. Were the visions you showed me supposed to make me feel guilt? Don't get me wrong, they didn't make me feel good, but after the life I've lived, that was just a drop in the bucket. Did you hope that I'd curl up in the corner, crying, riddled with shame over the horrible deeds of my past? Did you think you could make me feel powerless and come crawling back to you, desperately hoping the great Dr. Dmitry Kosorotov could make sense of it all? I gave up any hope of making sense of this life a long time ago. Well, not that long ago, I guess, but still. We've both done terrible, unforgivable things, Kasorotov. But all you did was remind me of the reasons I go on. So, you can still manage to surprise me. Very well. What is it you intend to barter away my soul for? What tool do you suppose will grant you an escape from this place? Well, there's no tool that can do that. You said so yourself. This base responds to your will. Hmm. Yes. So? I wish for you to be trapped in eternal torment. Every nerve ending in your body alive with pain. Ah! I want every memory that brings you grief, fear, and sorrow to be relived as though they were fresh in the moment. Again and again. Never allowing you a chance to grow numb. I want you to be imprisoned within your own body, eternally, and to only find release when you serve my will. You're my tool now, my weapon, and I'll call on you whenever I please. What is it you want? Right now, I want to know how to get out of this room. You have to save the magic world! Knowing you, it's not please or thank you, is it? No. Nothing so stolid as that. All I have to do is think this word, and the base, she responds to me. She? Yes, she. I wouldn't expect you to understand, but this base has just as much an identity and sense of self as you or I. Ah! She becomes what I want takes me where I wish to go. Ugh. She's a living organism, you see, grown using amaranthian cells, harvested from my research. Tell her what you wished her to be, and she'll become it. Damage her, and she will heal. Speak to her, and she will answer you. All you have to do is call her by her name. What is it? Her name? Sobotska! Why? Why did you choose that name? Tell me why. Oh, it's just a name. A diminutive, really. What should it matter to you what name I call her by? Unless it has some significance to you. It doesn't. None at all. Come to think of it, your father was quite fond of that name. Said he might use it if he ever had a little girl. But he got an abomination instead! Stay there. I don't have much of a choice anymore, do I? So... Sorochka... Open the door. Is anyone, Is anyone here? 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 Hello? 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 Everything, Everything looks, looks the same. The same. The same. It's like an iPad. It's like an iPad. It's like an iPad. It's had a baby. It's like an iPad. 
Take a moment to fill your lungs, humans. I am not human, and neither is this precious bundle of angel kisses on my shoulder. He means me, of course. Thank you, Kib. Though that may have been the most traumatic moment of my adorable life. The interrogation room should be just above this chamber. Look up there! What's that? Napoleon? It looks like Nap. But how can we be sure? What do you mean? How, how do we know you're not just literally Hitler's brain wearing Napoleon's body? Because I'd have suture marks for one. Ooh, yeah, good point. Wait, how did you guys find out about that? And who are these squids and these two weird hipster guys? I, I am an octopus, actually. What's a hipster? No idea. I'll explain it to you later. Right now, we need to get out of here or we'll drown. Oh, right. Serochka, uh, get us out of this place. Ugh, you put me all wet. It's very rude to burst into the walls in a gush of water like you did. You almost disrupted Jeremy's nap. He's not doing so well without his ethers. Katya? What are you doing here? Don't worry, Nap. She's on our side. For the now. Well, it appears you two haven't had much luck finding your way out of here. No. The base seems to be in constant flux, changing its form all around me. One door never leads to the same place twice. It's quite exhausting. Really? How can you tell? Everything just looks the same to me. Well, it takes a very keen eye to notice the subtleties. We cephalopods have very sophisticated eyes, you know. That means like an octopus or squid. Yeah, I know. Oh, all right then. She's right about the base, though. It is in constant flux. It's actually a living organism. So we're in the body of some thing? Not a thing. Her name is... Sorochka. It's a she? That's the word you said. Sorochka. Before the wall let loose, and we spilled out into this hallway. Yeah, you... Well, you just call her by name when you need something. That's all we had to do? Say the secret word? Uh, Sorochka, was it? I'm not sure exactly on the finer minutia. Busting through the wall like that was only the third time I'd ever tried it. And we're still stuck inside the base from the looks of things. Sorochka, uh, make me a whiskey sour. Sorochka, play some acid jazz. No, Sorochka, play some electric cytico. She's not an Alexa. At least, I don't think she works like that. No. It wouldn't make any sense to give everyone authorization. You'd have to be granted permissions. Gear to explain how you came about that privilege. Yeah, we can't even access the core like that, and we work here. Only Dr. Kasorotov, Anatoly, and that screaming brain in a jar who turned into a zombie. <gasps> Literally Hitler! Why are you wearing Nap's body? Explain yourself, sir. Hey, let go of me. I'm pretty sure I just saved all you guys. Well, maybe not the cephalopod type so much, but the non-aquatic folks for sure. A clever ruse to win our trust, Hitler. Boys, please, not so rough. We don't know that this is literally Hitler. <laughs> but we don't know that he isn't either. Look, no sutures, remember? Explain to me how they performed a brain transplant without cutting the skin. 
They must have downloaded literally Hitler's memories and overwrote them on Nap's brain meat. They can do that? I saw a show about it once. Oh, Poppy Gold, the human brain is too weak and spongy to survive such a procedure. Indeed. And I'm about as weak and spongy as they come. I know how to solve this. Quick nap. Rub my belly. Tybalt, this isn't the time. Trust me, Scratch. I know what I am doing. Come on, Nap. Look at my chubby, fluffy belly. See how exposed I am. How could you resist? Give in to the most primal desires, Nap. Rub the belly. Rub it, I say. I'm not falling for that again, Tybalt. I almost lost a finger last time. It would have grown back. I know that, Scratch, but it's still super annoying. It's Nap. No unsuspecting creature could resist my chubby dum-dum. Don't be silly. That couldn't be literally Hitler. Ja! Because das is me! How do you like my shiny new robot body? Pretty sweet, da? Ja? My, my, Kopsia. Yeah. What esteemed company you keep. I'm glad to see you've done so well for yourself since stepping out on your own. I'm glad you approve, Anatole. This ragtag lot has more courage, more compassion, more genuine humanity than you and your cronies could ever fathom. Yes, because unlike you, I revel in the fact that I've become something more than human. Yeah! Being human is so lame! Okay, Sorochka, maybe I wasn't specific enough. Take us outside of the base, like now. No, she heard you the first time. She did? Oh yes, all of us with access to her mind heard you. Ja, we just overread the command. Two against one. You got outvoted, ha? Huh? It seems your only way out is for us. You mean the exit is through the door behind you? Yes, the exit is through that door behind me. Do I have to spare everything out for you? Um, Nap, we need to step things up a bit, actually. What? Why? We took preventive measures to assure that Hitler and his forces would be, um, contained. To be more specific... Detonated. I knew those things you were planning against the wall were more nefarious than you were letting on! Breadcrumbs, my ass! Those greenhorns planted bombs all throughout this whole place! You did what? Well, we expected that once we rescued you... You could just use your vampire magic and it'd all be said and done. So, vampire up already! Get us out of here! I'm not a vampire! Whatever you call it. Just do that life-sucking thing and get rid of Robo-Hitler and this pinko, okay? And step on it! I don't have enough control over it. Not yet. I'm more likely to kill everyone here outright if I start messing around with that kind of thing. He's right. I have seen this handy book. Look, how much time do we have? About 15 minutes. This base is filled with innocent circus folk. We need to get him out of here before it blows. Tybalt, run distraction. We need to come up with a plan real quick over here. On it. Oh, my tiny chubby belly is so exposed. Look how cute and fluffy. See how fragile and defenseless I am against the ravaging of human or robot hands. I want to pet the kitty. Not before me, you don't. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that! <laughs> yes, yes, fight over my buttery plump dum dum, you fools. <laughs> Okay, Leah, Gally, and Scratch, you can all teleport, right? That's a big 10-4. Well, obviously. I'm a demon after all. You see me do it, Nap. Where are you going with this? And Gabe, your belt lets you teleport too, correct? Indeed. Thanks to my superior reptilian technology. Yeah, yeah, I know. Humans are dumb and they suck. We got it. Thanks. 
Kelly, you and Gabe will form one team, and Scratch and Leah, you form another. We're going to try and round up as many freaks as we can and teleport them out of this place before it blows. But Nap, we don't know our way around this place well enough to go on a freak hunt. No, but we do. We'll go with you. I can tell you they won't come with you willingly. They've been brainwashed by literally Hitler. Now, Robo-Hitler. He's been talking about his plans for glorious freak overthrow since his jar days. They aren't going to give up on that fantasy so easily. Then we knock them out cold. For their own good, of course. Oh, yes. Leave that to us. <laughs> we used to hand out concussions like they were candy back in our scraps of the old folks home. <laughs> All right. But no permanent damage. Okay, ladies? Ah. <sighs> No good pouting, girls. We're running out of time. Not really. We have all the time in the world. We're temporal mitigation agents. Okay, well, I don't know what that is, but that's nice, I guess. All we have to do is open a temporal portal a few hours back. Like a door through time? Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Look, we'll take the gang with us. Round everyone up and transport the freaks out of here. If they ask us why, we'll just tell them Robo Hitler said so. Look, I don't know you guys, and while I appreciate how much that would simplify things, I can't say I really trust your judgment. Why not? The whole deal with the bombs, uh, I don't know, and I really don't want all my friends stranded in the past. We'll keep these young greenhorns in check. Turn them over our knee and spank them if we have to. They're long overdue for it if you ask me. <sighs> well, okay, I guess. Whatever you're gonna do, you better do it now. So, we don't get to go back through time? Afraid not, Wolfie. You, me, Thibaut, and Nap are on the front line in this battle. It's Tybalt. And the Soviet vampires. Just give on until Jeremy wakes up. We'll have to make sure that Robo Hitler and Anatole don't make it through those doors in life. Though it looks like they're doing our work for us. You don't deserve to rub that kitty's belly! Yes, I do! Did you really just try to kick me in my spatzel? No, my foot slipped, I swear. And break your arms and legs, you gummy bastard! <laughs> your cat petting days are through, Anatolo! Now the softness of the kitty is mine to behold! My legs. You broke my legs. I grow weary of you. Mm. No, no, no. Please set me down gently. Don't throw me. Ah! My arms. Why? Now let me at that chubby kitten belly. Haha, <laughs> I tricked you. <laughs> I must say, you've looked better. You wouldn't dare fight me as you are, Katya. Not with your ether weakened as I sense it is. I've been waiting for this battle a long time, and I've dreamed of the punishments I'd one day inflict upon you. I'm more than ready to die if it means taking you with me. Incapacitated as I may be, I can still drain you of your life force. Should you dare to touch me, you could not withstand such an attack. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a dinner invitation if I've ever heard one. May I? <laughs> Be my guest. Ah! Ah!
what I like about you, Napoleon? What's that? It no matter how hard I smash you or stomp you, you just pop right back up. Thirsty for more! Thanks. I guess. I call this the old head against the wall technique. That doesn't really constitute a technique. Oh, da! Nap, duck! Oh, jeez. Quick, over here! You can't hide from me! I'm Robo Hitler! He's too strong for us to take him down in battle, but watching you has given me a chance to study his movements. So while I was getting my head smashed in, you were just taking notes? Don't be so dramatic. I knew that you would regenerate. Okay, but still. Look, if you can boost me up onto his back, see that valve sticking up there? Yeah? What about it? Don't you get it, Nap? All that hissing and steaming? It's old technology. That thing is probably running off a triple expansion engine. What? He's steam-powered, Nap. It wouldn't take much to disable that contraption if I could just get up there. Okay. Um... Get up on my shoulders. You're serious? Sure. I go running in. Robo-Hitler won't be able to resist taking another swing at me, which leaves you in the perfect position to climb on up there. Okay, let's do it. Ah! There you are, Napoleon! Prepare for my fist to the face technique! Now's your chance, Dorcas! Go for it! Alley-oop! You know... I've really never had Russian food before, uh, aside from borscht, which was meh. But your friend, oh, magnifique. Oh, how do you say that in Russian? Your yeah, mongrel may have eaten my arms and legs, Katya, but I will still triumph. And I also eat one finger. Yes, it's a shame your robot friend was so fixated on using Nap as their immortal punching bag, rather than coming to your defense. I suppose there's something to be said for teamwork. Wouldn't you agree, Jeremy? <sighs> Never mind. Oh, that does not sound good. The bombs! We have to get out of here. The explosion will take care of them for us. Werewolf, grab Jeremy. Hold him tight. I'm holding, I'm holding. Nap, quit mincing about. This place is going to blow. Be right with you. Dorcas, how are you coming along? Almost there. Go on ahead. Focus. I'm not leaving you. Mostly because Robo Hitler is throttling me. Hold on. This should release the steam pressure in the hands and fingers. Just tweak that there, and voila! Well, you can't just take control of people's hands like that. It isn't fair. Get free, Nap. Now get moving. I'll be right behind you. Come on, Nap. Hurry. I'm running as fast as my cute little legs can carry me. Same here. It will be just through this door. I don't see Dorcas. I'm going back for her. There is no time! I'll be fine. Please, just get yourselves clear of the blast. Oh, come on, guys. You heard the kid. Let's get the hell out of here. Goodbye, Napoleon. It has been an honor. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so that is the second to last episode. Yeah, uh, episode 27 is going to be our finale, and it's going to be a doozy, I hope. You know, doozy is kind of in the ear of the beholder, but uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a good one. So what did you guys think of this one? It was, it was kind of fun. Uh, we actually got to see Tybalt in action, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, giant robot battle which actually was something that uh, a long time ago, the, the whole concept of the Dorcas Morlock character has been in play for a very long time. 
Uh, I discuss it with me and my friend Robert, who uh, it's actually based off of uh, somebody he found in a yearbook a very, very long time ago, a yearbook from 1931. And he had discussed the character and like we were going to write this comic about her. And he's like, I want to see her fighting robots. And I was like, well, here you go, man. <laughs> this is the robot fighting episode just for you. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it, even if uh, you're not into robot battle. I hope there's a little something for everybody. Um, very special thanks to the Midnight Block, who allowed us to use their song for this episode, and that is what I've become. Midnight Block is a fantastic kind of horror-based punk band, uh, and you know what? They are good buddies with Horrorgasm, and Horrorgasm is kind of a horror-themed art kind of convention, extravaganza, um, just anything that you could want just in the genre of dark or horror or creepy. If you're into that kind of stuff, you, you got to check out HorrorgasmSD.com because it is for you. And uh, so guys, all the links are going to be below for um, Midnight Block, for Horrorgasm. Uh, my links, I actually write a comic book through Horrorgasm. Uh, well, it's just one story that's relating to Creeping Wave called The Hostage, uh, and it's in their summer issue. You can actually buy the bundle for Horrorgasm, which is all the Tales for Horrorgasm comics bundled together for just $20, and I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that. You can buy my comic Lost Red, which was kind of the first incarnation of Creeping Wave Radio. Um, and I always say like, oh, I'm so happy I'm not writing comics at this point because it's so much work. And then like I spend uh, hours upon hours editing and doing artwork for the podcast. So I'm not sure I'm saving so much time with that. Uh, Lost Bread I kind of did through Gramerica, who's one of my Patreons. And uh, I want to thank the Gramerica Show, Nikki Benfield, and the lovable Neil for supporting me and helping make this show possible, helping make it so I can like take time out uh, once a year and kind of do all of this. Because it, it is a huge effort that we actually started recording voices and getting everything together uh, in the summer and the scripting even before then so it's it's quite an undertaking and uh, it really helps to get support if you want to support us on patreon patreon.com slash lucid nap all one word or you can do a small one-time donation at buymeacoffee.com slash lucid nap and the links are going to be below if you don't want to donate that's all good that's it's kind of an investment really especially times being what they are but you can follow us on social media you can keep up that's always good. Talk to you later. Bye. The You Mind is brought to you by Lucid Nap Productions in cooperation with a... Don't say it. A hairy old man. I'm not that hairy. You've got goat legs for crying out loud. Hello, podcast addicts and curious listeners. Dr. Galvanic's Odd Tales is a narrated podcast with dark, thrilling, and mysterious stories. In each episode, Dr. Galvanic's Odd Tales will take you through the mysteries of the Australian outback, lead you into a remote corner of the galaxy, or it will accompany you through a mind-bending nightmare. You can find Dr. Galvanic's Odd Tales on Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Subscribe to the show so you won't miss another episode. See you out there. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.